school board meeting of Tuesday, January 9th, 1996 is called to order. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Connie? Uh, we'd like to add a, an executive session for the purpose of discussing teacher negotiations at the end of the agenda. Thank you. Any other adjustments, Charlie? I believe under new business co-curricular positions, I believe there are none. I think that needs to be deleted from our agenda. Thank you. Any others? Next item on the agenda is approval of December 12th school board minutes. Charlie? Under communications, I believe when we were uh, recognizing people, especially building, um, the building committee, et cetera, that we did recognize um, Beth Courier. That's correct, we did. And I think that needs to be noted for the amount of time. I think it needs to officially go into the record. Thank you, Charlie. Because she did serve both on the building committee and the uh, movable equipment subcommittee. Uh, any other changes? I had one um, under same page 5B, the ADA report. I think Gail Parker invited school members to attend the ADA committee meetings, not necessarily serve on the committee. And on, on the next page, um, under 5G, um, it was Gail Dransfield who publicly rep recognized all the individuals, the student guides and all. Wasn't that you, Gail? I don't think so. Wasn't you? Wasn't it? it was Connie. 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 Connie did it then, sorry. Well, I thought we both did. But... Okay. <laughs> Are there any others? Seeing none, the school board minutes are approved as amended. The next item on the agenda is comments by high school and middle school representatives. Uh, middle school, why don't you go first? My name is Allison Cunningham, and I'm filling in for Alicia and Lori because neither of them were able to make it tonight. And going on in our school, we have our sweatshirt drive, and that we made a pretty good profit on, and we just ended that a couple weeks ago. And also we have our dance, which we rescheduled to February because of all the snow days that we had. Um, we also have a social coming up in late January, and that's going to be at Happy Wheels. And the student council is talking about um, distributing carnations to, like, to people that you would want to give them to for Valentine's Day. And we just recently had our winter concert. That was a success. And the seventh grade trip to the Boston Museum of Science was successful also. And the student council also sponsored a family through um, a church in South Portland. And they were really appreciative of that. And girls basketball just started today. That's it. Great, thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. High school representatives? Um, because of all the snow days, our midterms have been changed from the week of January 15th to the week of the 22nd, and the second semester will now begin on the 26th of January. A letter has been sent home to all the parents, and they should have gotten it today or tomorrow. Um, our new computer lab, which is off the library, is scheduled to open the 26th. The speech and debate team went to Bangor last weekend and they placed second and there were seven to eight individual winners and the junior dance, which was snowed out, got rescheduled to the Saturday night. Anything else? No? Yeah. Any questions or comments? Great. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item on the agenda is communications. Any communications? No. Not at this no? 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 No communications. <laughs> Next item is superintendent's report. Connie. 
And we're going to start with a report from uh, Anko Principal Tom Eismeyer regarding his entry plan. He came to the board, I think it perhaps was in August, if I remember September, correctly. September, I think. September. September. Um, outlining his intentions to uh, interview various staff members, board members, parents, um, and obviously to observe and attend various meetings. Uh, and he's now ready to give you a summary. I think I have uh, given each of you one. Is there anybody here who did not get a written summary of that? Tom. Thanks. Welcome. Um, you can see from the outline, I just want to spend a few minutes reviewing the purpose and the background of the plan. I actually started this plan way back in uh, July with Connie's help and guidance. Um, it seemed relatively easy then. I do want to point out that I did not plan the snow days, and even though I moved from Vermont, I don't want to take the blame for all the snow days. <laughs> the, um, the philosophy of the entry plan was to, to give uh, any new um, member of the administrative team the opportunity to learn about the system, not just listen, but to make the plans uh, public and with a great deal of respect for the work that's gone on before, particularly in Cape Elizabeth, in the system and for the people. Um, just to remind you of the plan itself, I wanted to learn about the systems and the procedures and the, and the policies and stay away from uh, personalities, basically. I did manage to uh, see most of you for a lengthy interview. I talked to some teachers. Um, I had individual interviews with parents and at an October Ponco Parents Association meeting, about uh, 50 or 60 parents came. We broke into groups and went through the the general exercise so I could get feedback from parents, too. Um, as Connie mentioned, uh, the, the plan itself is interesting, but I've also learned a lot in my first six months on the job unrelated to the plan, but I can report back to you about that anyway. Um, for my own information, if I ever have to do this again, the, uh, I think I do things a little bit differently. The, uh, the plan didn't quite work as I expected. I think I learned uh, a lot more from informal conversations than some of the more formal ones. And parts of it didn't work at all. I, I remember being uh, enthusiastic about uh, subbing for teachers so that they could uh, observe in other classes, and that hasn't uh, panned out yet. It was voluntary. I hope to be able to do it again. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe uh, I haven't been teaching uh, in quite some time. Maybe uh, people lost confidence in my teaching ability. But that's still on my agenda. Um, the results, I've uh, kind of aggregated them, so if you have talked to me as a parent or a teacher or board member and mentioned something specific that's not here, I've, I've, I've noted it, they're in my notes, but I just wanted to report back generally. On your list, for the people who, who can't see it, it mentions incredible strengths that all three groups agree on. Um, dedicated, knowledgeable teachers, that came out as a very strong message from everybody I talked to. Uh, involved, supportive parents, very knowledgeable about education and their kids. Um, I think we all took for granted, but I've noticed myself that the students, the kids, the children themselves are very responsible. They have a very positive attitude towards school and toward learning and well prepared for school every day. The um, school board, I should compliment you because uh, I've been checking up on you. Uh, very focused on policy and, and good at what you do, which is uh, staying away from micromanaging on one hand, concentrating on curriculum and policy and budget. The new facilities um, were beginning to take for granted, but when I started this, it was uh, uh, such a breakthrough, I think, for Pond Cove that uh, came up a lot. And people uh, mentioned initiatives that have been going on in the past few years, total quality management, which has had positive effects, human dynamics, uh, differentiated curriculum work with Jim Curry, which is uh, here and there in the school, and particular system-wide committees, particularly the technology committee. You heard from them last month, which is almost a model for a good committee. Concerns. Um, first of all, I should mention there are, there are no crises going on in, in Ponco, believe it or not, which is I think is very healthy. The things that uh, caused concerns before that I heard about as part of the history have been dealt with. The, the facilities being one, and the career ladder, and a few other things seem to have been put behind everybody. So um, for the future, the concerns would be, yes, we have a lot of initiatives going on, uh, but 
parents, board members, staff members would like to know what are we going to do with all these initiatives? Uh, how are we going to join them and unify them? What's the overall purpose? I heard a lot about setting standards for kids, uh, for their academic standards and uh, standards for their behavior. Uh, and I'm not sure we have clarified what we expect of them academically upon COVID. And if we, if we have, not everybody knows what the standards are. The budget came up as a persistent theme. Um, the concern is to uh, maintain the high quality of education upon COVID, but have a realistic and affordable budget. The teachers particularly feel this with the loss of um, certain parts of the budget, like the ed tax, and the uh, parents are concerned about the priorities that have led to uh, not having the allied arts program, for example, in, in uh, kindergarten. Uh, time, which is a typical concern of everybody, came up with, and this is related to the initiatives. We have all these things to do. When are we going to do it on a broad basis? It also came up. Um, as a question of how we spend time during the day. What's the core curriculum and what are our priorities during the day? Curriculum coordination and cohesion. We have a language arts curriculum. We have Chicago math. And people really aren't quite sure what the cycle is. We're revisiting them and then working on uh, the other areas that need work, like science and social studies and so on. Um, it, that came uh, strongly from teachers and from parents. I think we're all aware of it, and uh, I think we're probably already uh, and willing to work on it. Communication was quite interesting. The um, Pond Cove doesn't lack for a communication system, but I'm not sure it's the most effective one. The, the grapevine works quickly. It's not the most accurate way of communicating in the school, but it's, uh, it works very well. The, the, the problem with that is that the grapevine carries limited information. And it, it keeps people from getting, I think, a, a broader perspective on, the, on both the strengths and the weaknesses of Pond Cove. And that leads to decision making, which is in the main very good with a good board. Um, but it, uh, it does lead to uh, persistent lobbying from groups. Uh, the parents who came to the meeting in, in October were quite open about it, uh, referring to their meetings at uh, bus stops and then delivering messages to usually the principal to do something about it. And the same thing can happen uh, internally, professionally, with uh, teachers or group of teachers lobbying in the best of interest for kids, but without a uh, broader perspective on the school. And this can lead to some competition for resources of the school, of time and money and personnel and so on. Uh, the next step is, I think it's the most interesting part, is now that uh, I'm no longer the new principal, but the principal, I have um, suggestions for where to go in the future. Any school, I think, that has strengths such as the ones I think we all know about at Pond Cove, I think is in incre incredibly good shape. Most school districts, I think, would be envious to have those strengths listed as part of their district. I think we should build on those. We often forget, I think, or I haven't been here that long, but. I think I tend to do it too, how good we are at certain things. And we don't acknowledge those things publicly. I think we should make more of an effort to do that. I know that teachers particularly uh, would like to hear more from the board and probably from me about the things that teachers do well. I'm also, uh, I'd also advocate now to, to have some kind of a process to um, link the staff, the administration, board members, and parents to have some kind of um, overall school-wide planning. Uh, the timing, I think, is good because you'll hear next week about the results of uh, revisiting the mission statement. I, and I suspect you'll hear the, the same themes in that report that you're hearing from me tonight. Uh, clarify what we do with curriculum. We're doing a lot of good work in curriculum, but no one's quite sure where we are. The documents are are good documents are being used, but parents particularly aren't sure where we stand with it. I, um, establish those high standards and uh, find ways of assessing them. Um, under communication, I'd like to uh, recruit people to do something that, that we call the Vermont School Report Night, which is essentially opening up the school, uh, bringing people in to give them as much information as they want about the school and its programs from 
the number of staff members to budget to curriculum and so on. It, it, uh, I don't think we can do uh, enough of that. Other simple things we could do that are in the works is complete the Pond Cove handbook, which was in the works but then stalled for a while because we had so many things to write about to do with a new school. Uh, it occurred to me over the summer that we sometimes lag in communication over the, over the summer. The school still exists and it's alive and vibrant during the summer, but there's kind of a gap and a simple thing to do would be to send a newsletter home in the summer. Parents particularly need more information about the budget. And I know that um, a few, at least two board members are working on that, so parents have more of a grip on what's going on. I think parents want to know what the priorities are, why we made the decision to keep some programs and not others. And, uh, just getting general information out would help. I'd like to be on the agenda here more regularly so I can uh, tell you what's going on at Pond Cove more briefly than I am tonight. And I would urge us to do curriculum presentations which are at least uh, K through 4. Since I'm concentrating on Pond Cove, I'll say K through 4. Uh, in our previous work, we've done grade level by grade level and done a good job. I think it's time now and people want to hear about how this can be a coherent picture K through four. And we've started something at the at faculty meetings, which I hope will continue. Um, yes, it's shared decision making. I know the jury is not in on that, but uh, so far so good at Pond Cove. We are working on self-studies in, as you can see in the paper on this sheet, science, social studies, assessment, discipline, and uh, the trimester, trimester slash reporting system. I think it's very important for the staff to be involved in these decisions have some say so on what goes on and then, then report back to you. Uh, the conclusion of the entry plan, I think uh, I'm sharing the information tonight and for me it means I can move from being more, less of an inquirer to more of an advocate. I was hired to bring certain skills and strengths to Pond Cove. I think I understand the system well enough now to see where I, I can apply those skills. And I, th I think this is an extraordinarily good time for Pond Cove to pick up the pieces, uh, get people to join us in setting a vision and, uh, and moving forward. The, the facilities work, the, the brand new building is a source of pride for everybody, and um, I hope we can go forward. Be happy to answer questions. Thanks, Tom. Um, questions from board members, comments? Carla? Could you clarify a little bit um, under recommendations and suggestions you had, you mentioned the school-wide planning process. How do you envision that? Um, I'd envision it as uh, getting a representative group together of, of school people, board members, and parents to uh, take stock of the school, kind of an inventory, uh, similar to what I've done in the entry plan of, of strengths and weaknesses, and from that see if we can craft a vision about uh, what Pond Cove is about and where we like to see it go. Um, and then use an inquiry process from there to work on the specifics, but be able to compare the specific initiatives with um, our vision. Uh, one problem we have now is the initiatives are good, but compared to what? Uh, there are a lot of good things we, we could be doing that we just don't have time for. I think this would help us stay focused and we could kind of use it as a screening to respond to all these demands in our time and effort. Other questions, comments? Anne? Thank you. It's, it's great to have this, to hear your reflections as somebody coming in new and now having been here six months and you know, talk to a wide range of people to have kind of a snapshot of um, where you think uh, things are. And it seems very thoughtful and um, complete to me. And I just had um, one suggestion as far as the budget information. I mean, we are going to be doing this piece in the, um, in the Cape Courier, but um, I think it, it might be helpful to parents if, uh, if the administrators in all three schools did something in the newsletter that's a little more fleshed out than, than we've done in the past in terms of giving parents information of the kinds of things that might yeah. be um, discussed um, during the budget process this year. So. We don't have some of the problems we've had in the past of people saying, well, if I had known that was going to be discussed, I certainly would have voiced an opinion. Yeah. I think that's so. easily done. I should also add, I mean, I've had a, a great time. I think it's a terrific job. Uh, people have been very supportive, and uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Too much sometimes. It seems, it just seems a great job. So. Priscilla? Um, I think the idea of having an across the 
grades curriculum presentation is a wonderful idea. I think that, um, though I was very impressed with the fourth grades presentation this year, you do sort of forget where it was back in kindergarten, or if you're at that end, you wouldn't think over four years you forget, but you do. You, you don't, you go from year to year just seeing the piece that you're involved in, and I think it would be very helpful for people who have children in the very young grades to just be able to look ahead and say, this is where we want to be, and, and looking ahead to middle school, knowing what's going to be coming up. So I, I think that's a great idea. And, and you're probably also aware that the, the policy subcommittee in reading has started something very positive too. I think that's the direction the reading committee is, it's a K through 12 committee is headed in, is, is getting a picture K through four, if that's the way we do it, five through eight, nine through 12. And I, I think with all the work people have put in, now is the time to do it. The, the other part I should mention before I leave is that uh, I, I left out Connie from this, but her influence over the past five and a half years or six years uh, is extraordinary. Uh, she, she's, uh, she's done a lot for everybody here. So I just wanted to publicly acknowledge that. I think we all know that, but uh, since Connie will not be with us much longer, I want us to, to consider that, uh, how much she's done for Cape Elizabeth. It's obvious to me as a new person. Thanks. Well, one, more Gail. one more comment. I liked your suggestion of celebrating our teachers, and I think um, we all intend to do that and try to do that. And lest we leave someone out, we're a little reluctant sometimes, but um, I would hope you and Rick and Nancy would let us know if there are things to be celebrated, teachers' achievements or particular groups that have done, um, not necessarily state champion level, just right. done something that we would like to applaud. That we would welcome that opportunity to publicly celebrate with them. Yep. Are there any people from the public who wanted to speak to Tom's plan? Anyone? No. Um, Tom, I've really enjoyed working with you, and I really appreciate the work in this plan and new eyes looking at our system and ready to tackle some tough challenges, and thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and at this point, I, I realize that I should have done this a couple of minutes before, but I want to welcome our new, my new secretary who is um, taking Connie Brown's place. It's Mary Bruns. Um, busily taking notes, and Mary is not uh, a new person to our school system. She's had a number of hats, uh, but this one is going to be, I think, an ongoing uh, example of her skill and devotion to the system. So welcome, Mary. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, okay, moving on. Well, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I have to take credit for the snow days. <laughs> And uh, uh, I, I would preface this by saying that when I uh, go around the schools and stick my head in the door and talk to a teacher about something, the teachers, especially at the elementary level, almost inevitably will say to the children, now, do you know who this is? <laughs> and some of them know me, some of them don't. But um, and they quite honestly say, you know, that she's a superintendent as if that was something to be impressed by. And I know that no child knows what a superintendent does. In fact, I think perhaps it's, you know, 99% of the town doesn't really know. So I usually say to the kids, I'm the lady that gets to call off school when it snows, um, which is the most visible thing I suppose <laughs> superintendents do. And um, right now. Uh, I could go on and on with little stories about that, but that's really not what we're here for today. Uh, the, we do, I have been in the school uh, arena one way or the other for over 30 years. I've grown up in Maine, lived here all my life, just about. I've never seen a winter like this one for having snow. I mean, why we had 10 days of a break at Christmas time and there wasn't a flake of snow, not a single storm, and we come back to school and we have two storms in a week. There's another one coming tonight and another one on Friday. I mean, I have never seen a confluence of that kind of thing. It's, I guess, just an enormous bad luck. I have seen years when we had uh, large snow banks and uh, then a thaw and uh, some uh, amelioration of the situation. 
Um, there was an article in this morning's paper uh, which I think summarized quite well what area superintendents are up against here. David Hinch called a lot of us uh, yesterday. He's uh, one of the reporters for the uh, Press Herald. And if anybody missed it, it was on the front page of the B section, and I would urge you to read it because it does, in fact, give you a pretty good background. But I have found people want to know, A, how these decisions are made, uh, you know, what um, do we look out the window, and so on <laughs> and so forth. Um, yes, we do. But uh, the essentially, uh, I'd like to just say a few words about this, set the stage, and then I realize one of the things we're here tonight is to discuss the issue. I have not asked the board to make a decision tonight. It is not on this agenda as an action item. I think it would be premature. We don't even know exactly what's going to happen in the next few weeks. So this is the discussion period. Um, I would point out is uh, we listened to the New York blizzard story and they're saying that the city of New York never closes its schools or only once every 30 years closes its schools. Please be aware that there is an underground transportation as well as a uh, public transportation system in the New York schools, obviously, public schools anyway, uh, have developed that as a way of dealing with that particular situation. Uh, each of us lives in areas where there are certain traditions, and the area that I'm well familiar uh, with is the Portland area, and for over 30 years, we have always asked superintendents to make judgments about snow days. So we do not have a tradition of leaving the schools open and saying to both staff and uh, students, get here if you can. Frankly, I wish we had that tradition. It would make my life a lot easier, but that isn't the tradition we have. Uh, the first thing that happens locally, and this is in the newspaper article today, it is common practice among superintendents, is that each of us contacts our public works director. That's the most common way, although in some other districts, larger districts in particular, there may be somebody uh, within the school system who actually gets out and rides the roads and so forth. But Bob Malley in our district is very cooperative. He calls me regularly at 4.30 in the morning to let me know what the situation is. Uh, we start conferring at that time, and as a matter of fact, he called me this afternoon to let me know what the weather forecast was. I said I really didn't want to hear it. Um, because this is not just my sense of what's going on. This is a situation that, again, traditionally, given the customs of this, this part of the state, uh, when weather is considered dangerous or uh, really disruptive um, and safety is a prime, prime reason for making any of these decisions, uh, the public works people are the ones who are really in the middle of it. They're the ones out there plowing. They're the ones that know what the stopping conditions are. And with school buses, sometimes it isn't so much the school buses going off the road. It's can, in fact, cars coming from either direction stop uh, because they can slide. And that is an issue. And anytime we run the buses, we assume that you assume we feel that they can be controlled and that the conditions make it reasonably safe. Right now, I have to admit, I think that little ones standing by snow banks, I know what it's like in my part of the town. Um, I think that's an issue I would um, assume that most parents are well aware of, all parents are well aware of, in standing there with their children or in some cases perhaps making the choice to take them to school themselves because it is certainly a poor visibility time and that's on a good day. Obviously with the snow blowing and so forth, uh, it's a problem. So this decision is made uh, not just by the superintendent but in conference with the road people and that's the way I make it. Um, I guess I probably never had a more uncomfortable call than the one yesterday. Um, there is nothing like calling off school when it's not snowing. Um, nevertheless, uh, if any of you happen to be here between 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock, the reason we made, I made that decision was because I have had kids stuck in school. I have put kids in buses out on the roads. I've been a superintendent for 13 years in two different districts. I know what it's like to have a bus go off the road, to have a bus stuck. Uh, I had a bus in Gorm one time stuck in ice on top of a hill, you know, where the golf course is in Gorm with five kindergartners and the, the driver couldn't get off the hill. And fortunately, he found uh, a woman in a house on the side of the road. He went over, knocked on it. She took the children in, gave them peanut butter sandwiches, and they watched TV until we could get them out of there, which was hours. We didn't get all the kids home that day until 8 o'clock at night. And the only way we got some of them home was to put chains on four of our buses to put them behind 
dump trucks or the, you know, the regular sand trucks and have little caravans. And when uh, I was in my office while this procedure was going on with it, obviously the cooperation of the police department and the public works and the phone rang, the little boy said to me, um, I want to talk to the superintendent. I assumed he, his mother had asked him to call and I was going to be talking to his mother. I said, do you want to talk to me, dear? Does your mother want to talk to me? And he said, no, I want, I want to talk to you. And he said, uh, it was stupid of you to have school today. <laughs> um, what could I say? Yes, probably it was. However, we had known there was going to be an ice storm. Uh, it had been a terrible winter, and one of the things that I was doing to cope with that situation was, if it wasn't doing anything in the morning, to have school and to send the children home by noon. We got stuck, literally. An ice storm came up, and then it rained, and the public works kept telling me the rain is going to melt the ice and we can get the kids home. And at 2 o'clock, I said, what are you going to do, bring in blankets and food? I mean, what, how are we going to get out of here? So. Those experiences, I have a slew of them. Any superintendent who has been in the business long enough has a slew of them. Each experience teaches you something about what you're dealing with. Um, this winter is posing unusual circumstances, and I, I simply am trying to proceed within that framework, um, and will continue to do that. I don't really see any option. I have talked and would like to talk with the board tonight there are times when a late arrival or a dismissal will work. One of the reasons some of us have stopped doing that is that when you have elementary children, we cannot send anybody home, particularly in very bad weather, unless we've been able to get hold of somebody and we know, in fact, there's somebody there to receive that child. It would certainly not make good sense to be sending a child home to sit on a doorstep in terrible weather. And when parents think that we're going to have school all day, if we don't contact them and then close down early, uh, those are the kinds of circumstances that can happen and, in fact, do happen. So we have almost 700, uh, oh, no, we have over 700 children at Pond Cove, counting kindergarten, obviously. We have to call every family. Now, there are many times when people are unavailable. We can't get hold of them. We have to make other provisions. So that idea of having the kids come in only to believe that we can get a legal day of school. We have a legal day of school if we have, if we can go beyond lunch. And uh, get it that way is something that has certainly occurred to me, and I would be very willing to keep that as a possibility, but I certainly want to send a letter home to parents, particularly the parents of small children, so that they are well aware that if school starts and it's a bad day and it turns really bad, there may be uh, reason why we decide to try to get the buses on the road and get the kids home before the ordinary 3 o'clock run. If you were here yesterday at 3 o'clock, I'm glad I didn't put the buses out in that particular weather at that particular time. We also have some walkers, and even though we are not a district as um, that has a percentage of walkers that South Portland and Portland have, sometimes, for instance, they can't have school because they can't get their sidewalks cleared off. We do have sufficient numbers of walkers so that we do take that into consideration. All of those are considerations. Um, having said as much, I do not know what the rest of this winter will be like. Those are two options I can try to use, but they will have limited application and we will deal with them as best we can. I have been asked uh, and discussed this with Bob Malley today because I knew we were going to have this discussion. There have been a few times when uh, Yarmouth or Falmouth um, at least once or twice uh, in Falmouth and a couple times in Yarmouth. Yesterday, for instance, they did not get the snow we got. They didn't get it with the intensity. Um, and it seems unbelievable there can be that kind of difference in a small area like this, but in fact, it can happen. Um, but essentially, you'll see the pattern pretty much the same in a general area. Now, having said as much, uh, we. Uh, are under obligation from, um, actually it's state statute, to have 175 teacher pupil days. We also have five, normally uh, by state statute, five teacher workshop days. This year we agreed uh, with the Teachers Association through negotiations to add two more, so we have seven teacher workshop days. Our calendar is a little longer because of that. Um, we simply, in a sense, uh, the days that are on the calendar with stars that are called snow days is simply a way of estimating when the end of the school year will come. 
we essentially start and you go 175 days. Um, appealing to the state uh, for uh, what they would call, I guess, the forgiveness of those days for unusual circumstances, it's almost always uh, denied because every year some area of the state has unusual weather circumstances and it's not usually uh, an appeal that's granted. If it were granted this year, it would have to be a whole area of schools that have been affected by this unusual pattern. It's not likely to happen. Furthermore, it's questionable whether it's a good idea. The um, ways in which we can make up days, um, we can rearrange uh, the teacher workshop days. We have two left. We can put them at the end of the school year and change those to being um, uh, teacher days. However, one of those is a workshop day, uh, which is intended to facilitate parent conferences and at the very I would, would have to assume that the least you would want to do would be to make that a half day or a release day to try to facilitate that, but uh, there, that doesn't diminish the number of days. It simply rearranges when the teacher pupil days could fall. Uh, we can make up school on Saturdays. We can look at vacations, and we can, of course, simply go to, um, what, the 4th of July? Uh, we can add days at the end. Um, those are pretty much the options. Years ago, we were able occasionally, the state allowed us to add hours at the end of the day. And for instance, you'd add an hour, maybe an hour and a half each day for a week, and you'd make up one day. Um, they ceased that practice a few years ago, and to my knowledge, have not allowed that uh, as a makeup. So that one, uh, unless something changes, is no, no longer available to us. Um, I think that uh, we don't have a whole lot of good options, and what I'm particularly unhappy about is that this is January 9th. <laughs> it's not March 9th. Hmm. And I, um, I just think it's, uh, it's a tough situation. So I put it on the agenda because I thought we needed to talk about it, and that is what I assume I see some people in the audience perhaps would like to address this also. Um, uh, all ears. Um, just to say a few words, the, a little bit of history. The reason we go so late in June this year is the two additional teacher workshop days, but we did start a little later this year because of the building project. Whereas the year before, I think we started closer to September 1st or 2nd with a teacher day, August 31st. So that is also a little bit of the factor why we go so late in June. Um, and I would just like to state that even if the state were going to waive some student days, I would not be in favor of that at all. I really feel like these days are incredibly important, every single one of them, to our students. Um, and um, I have heard from a number of parents on this issue. I think we all have. And there is a very wide spectrum of what people believe would be the right thing. Get rid of February vacation, get rid of April vacation, let's do Saturdays, it, it really runs you know, across. So whatever decision is made is probably not going to make everybody happy. Um, but I've also heard from parents, if you go that last week in June, my child has signed up for camp and I'm pulling my child anyway from school or whatever. So it, it is not a great situation. I think um, we can all listen to what everybody has to say. But it's also really important that the teachers realize that June 1st comes around and we need all of those days as really um, tough academic days for our kids, that summer doesn't begin June 1st and field trips begin and things wind down, that we, we need all of those days. But anyway, um, Anne? Um, I'd just like to clarify something Connie said about the issue of sending elementary school kids home. At the elementary school, unless something changed since last year, now that my kids are out of there, there is a form that kids the parents fill out about their kids at the beginning of the year that says if if your kid has to if we have to close school or whatever um, how do we contact you is that still yes. going on so I mean you're supposed to list a plan either the kid can just go home or the kid goes home in the care of the neighbor or I have to be called so there is already a procedure in place to do that of course it's it hasn't not been used in a great long time or at all since we've had the form in place and I do think it would be a good idea to 
uh, you know, send a reminder home to parents, you know, particularly with the weather the way it is um, now. But, you know, frankly, um, I feel that, you know, we, sh we need to have school whenever we can. And if occasion, you know, there have been a couple days um, that we could have started later or, you know, could have left early. Um, and I think we have to aggressively pursue doing that for the rest of this year because all the other options are terrible. Um, and I think, you know, we just have to make parents aware of the fact that, you know, we're not, we're not babysitters. This is school and we have to have a way of getting in touch with them or in, in these situations. No one likes it, it's inconvenient, but, um, you know, the, the alternatives that we're going to discuss here are, um, you know, not convenient or fun for, for anybody. Um, so I would like to see us pursue that to the extent that we can, particularly this year, but also just have it, you know, kind of in place that, that we will do that if, if the situation is, um, you know, particularly vague on any one of these days. Um, and I would just, you know, again, as Beth said, I think all of us have heard from people and I've heard every option discussed. You know, some people are very happy to do away with vacations and, and all that. And I guess my, my concern about uh, doing away with the, with the two weeks of vacation is it's not, it's not only families but staff members who have, you know, made, made plans reasonably so. And it's easy for people who haven't said, uh, you know, who haven't put down, you know, large deposits on vacations or whatever, or planned something for years or whatever to say, well, let's just do away with that. But um, practically speaking, if we do have a lot of staff members who go away on vacation, and I think we do, um, you know, we're going to be in a situation where we have a lot of substitutes coming in teaching the kids, and I'm just not sure we're, we're getting real good value there for that time. So I would rather see us take a more piecemeal approach. We're not in a desperate situation yet where we have to do away with, um, you know, weeks of a vacation of, at a time. And, and I guess I would, I would like um, to see us look at moving those two workshop days. Um, I, I don't think the only option is to put them at the, at the end of the year. We could put them on Saturdays. I'm sure the teachers would probably prefer to do them on Saturdays. I don't know why we couldn't do parent conferences on a Saturday, for that matter. And you know, take that step fairly swiftly so, so that people know those are um, student days. Let the teachers have a discussion about how to you know, deal with the Saturday or at the end of the year issue. And, um, and then if we, if we are still in a dire situation, then add Saturday. Um, pupil days as necessary. So, just to throw yeah, out I just, some ideas. Did you want to clarify it all about um, the same letter that goes home about the um, sending children home early should also lay out a plan for what a delayed start oh, would delayed look start, like? Right. Because I don't think we've ever heard in Cape Elizabeth what that would look like for our kids. And if a real detailed letter went out that said, if on the news we have a one hour delay or a two hour delay, what the bus schedule would look like. It would just be one hour later, and if it was called off, then later. But real detailed plans on that one would be great also. I, I think everyone should get a letter if well, we're going to change this, not just kindergarten through fourth right. grade, yeah. but right. yeah. every school student. Yeah. Yeah. Go, Carla, go ahead. Um, I have a um, comment first and then a question. The comment is just for the sake of discussion, I absolutely personally have not decided anything myself, but for the sake of discussion, all the feedback that I personally have gotten from parents so far favors doing away with February vacation. That's just strictly the personal feedback that I have gotten. The parents I have spoken to would rather give up their February vacation than go to the end of the summer. And one parent who called me today has high school students who have summer jobs lined up at a summer camp and this kind of thing would impact the older students where summer camps seem to start earlier and earlier and some of them are starting that last week of June and expecting their staff to be there the week before. So they would probably fall into the category, Beth, that you mentioned of people that simply wouldn't be there. Um, I do also think there's room to discuss the, the uh, workshop days. Um, one idea with the vacation, and as I said, it's just for discussion, I haven't decided, but we have in the past, vaguely talked about following the model elsewhere in the country of having a March vacation and not two vacations. And obviously, we're not going to change when our vacations are, but it could be sort of an experiment for one vacation in the spring and see how the community likes it. Um, just a thought. <laughs> My question, and maybe Connie or Rick can clarify, I know the teacher days for the 
number of days for seniors are different and that's why graduation is set earlier. Has graduation, has the number of days been affected for that yet? <laughs> I called the uh, State Department of Education today mm -hmm. and seniors need to be in class 170 days 170. instead of 175, so right now we're one over. Okay. Um, if we were to move those workshop days to the end of the school year, we would have the buffer of one more day. Um, one of the things I plan to do is, is meet with uh, Dwight Ely, who's a senior advisor, and also members of the seniors, and maybe work out some uh, days with, in which the seniors could, could make that up. Uh, moving the, the graduation would be extremely difficult. We've already booked, when I mean, you have to do a year in advance, we've booked a place for project graduation, we've booked a place for a banquet the night before graduation. Um, and I already know that the following week, uh, an example, the University of New England has already booked for project graduations of other high schools. So there, there would be a number of uh, hurdles that we would have to face um, where we'd have, have to move graduation. So I'm hoping that we can look at some piece, you know, other ways uh, or alternatives before we get to moving Ju uh, the June 7th time. So, but it is why it's five, seniors are required five less days than, uh, and I asked about a waiver uh, for seniors and they said un under certain circumstances they will, but it would have to be after looking at some options first, what options have you, uh, reviewed before they would they would allow that. So actually the newspaper stated 165, but mm, they right, said that that was inaccurate. Yeah. They said that was inaccurate. So. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have a couple of questions that um, seem pretty simplistic, I guess, but are we looking now to have school through the 24th because of today's, uh, yesterday's snow day? Yesterday's, well, yes, we are, we're looking 24th. at the fact that there's another day that has to be made up or added. Okay, so that would be at the end. Mm -hmm. So it's a given that we're going to go through the 21st. Yeah. Given. So if we, to give up a, a vacation, we would be getting that week dismissal? Well, you'd be, it, it's all a matter of, of getting the 175, however you do it. Okay. But right now, if we do not give up either vacation mm -hmm. and give up one teacher workshop day, for student day, mm -hmm. we would be getting out on June 21st. Mm -hmm. If we did one teacher workshop day, it would be June 21st. If we did two, it would be back to the 20th, but we will probably have more snow days. Okay, so, with, and then if we decide to put in this delayed start or early release, then those days would count as a pupil day. Right, I, I think that the trouble is, is that those are likely to be ways of getting through March. I, I understand you know, that. I'm they're just not likely to, to help as June. much at this particular, given what's likely to be happening now. They might, but it's not. So our seniors would graduate the 7th, and we would have two full weeks of classes for the rest of the student body. Which would mean senior exam week would have to be different. There would have to just be the seniors going. So would seniors go to school to classes then that whole week, the third through the seventh, or would they have an exam schedule and essentially have one period of an exam that whole week? Okay. Well, I also had received quite a number of phone calls. Um, and to the one, they recom these people recommended the February vacation being eliminated. But I only heard, well, one elementary school, but my parents were all high school parents. And their argument was that the sports often have championship playoffs, swim and basketball, and there are activities in the high school going on right now for that whole February vacation anyway. Um, and that was... Ah, okay. Uh, on Monday through Friday, so. And they're scheduled because it's a vacation week exactly. statewide? Exactly. That's right. Okay, so well, that's what I wanted to clarify all those points. <laughs> yeah. well, I, have, I have additional comments. If Charlie or Priscilla, you want to say anything? Yeah, I do. Um, in my job, I have to make the same decision that Connie makes, so I am a person that. Um, sympathizes with you. I'm out there at 4 o'clock in the morning, too. 
You know, this year will come and go when we've lived, most of us or many of us here grew up in this state, we'll all look back and say, remember the year of 95, 96, when we had to go to school until July 15th or whatever. And we can all smile about it. If someone is seriously hurt or killed because we did not cancel school or we did not leave in a timely manner, we'll look back at this year and we'll regret it. I would rather go later, I would rather go on Saturdays, and want you to continue to make this the, uh, what I feel or what, except for that first day. <laughs> Why <Wise decision. laughs> I Wise admit that was a bad <laughs> decision. And you will have my support. And I have only heard, I've actually heard a couple of people say they prefer to go longer, um, or Saturdays rather than vacations. I echo a lot of what Ann said. Um, I think we need to look at those teacher workshop days. I don't necessarily think they have to go to the end of the year. I think there are some things that are going on that we need to be working on and to wait till the end when there isn't enough energy. I, I think we need to look at Saturdays maybe for those workshop days to free them up as, as possible, snow days. I'm not adverse to Saturdays for school, for school children. I have teenagers that are in high school, and the later we put them into the summer, it does affect their ability to, to get jobs or maintain jobs, because um, I don't think employers are going to be that sympathetic. There are college kids coming home. They're vying for the same jobs as college kids. And uh, I would offer more Saturdays. I really think that we do need to look at the vacation um, and going to one, one essentially spring type vacation versus two vacations. And I think that would free up five days that we could use as a built in. But I don't see that as, as, an, as a real option for this year. Because if parents have plans, if staff have plans, I don't see them canceling them. And I see parents pulling their children out. But it's very, well, let's, let's repeat. Uh, I think it, it's definitely worthwhile to look at the two teacher workshop days as alternative student days. Uh, I'm wondering about uh, having the teachers come in on Saturday if there's a, an issue of ordering the work on Saturday or a contractual thing at all. Or? Well, essentially, the board sets the teacher, excuse me, the uh, student um, schedule. Um, there is, of course, the obligation to advise and consult with the association. I've already had a conversation with, um, with Clark Smith, the association president, and he said very simply, everybody is sympathetic about let's work together and find some solution that will, uh, will be the best one. I mean, teachers are well aware of what our options are. I mean, there are only so many. Um, and I. I believe that the um, association had a meeting this afternoon of its executive board. I would expect to be hearing back as to some suggestions, and certainly we will be talking with teacher groups as to what their thoughts are, just as we're inviting not only this discussion, but through this discussion, frankly, inviting parents to either contact me directly, which I've had some people do, or write us, or call your area <laughs> board member. Um, it, I think the inevitable answer, of course, is that there isn't any uh, perfect solution. It's simply finding one that seems to be the best. It will be a combination, I'm sure. I, uh, using the two workshop days, I think, is a, is a pretty good alternative, but that only gives us a one-day cushion. Mm -hmm. and, you know, as we've said, it's likely that we're going to get more. What would be some other alternatives, do you think, of just going... Well, the Saturday, I mean, I, I, there's a certain um, justice in going on Saturday. If you miss a day during the week, could we have some kind of a, a routine, for instance, where we automatically knew we were going to make up that day that week on Saturday? Um, again, this is an opportunity to let people know that these kinds of issues need to be faced up to. Um, and um, I appreciate your comments about making safe calls. It's. Um, uh, it's a no-win situation, and I have to admit that going out in with, as I said earlier, the snow drifts being what they are now, accidents are, are going to occur 
even when it's a good day. Um, we do live in a more litigious society than we used to. Um, we are dealing with a situation where this is what some of us call an old-fashioned main winter, like when I was a girl and walked through my house to school and 40 below zero. And I think perhaps my memory is uh, um, forgetting some of the other pieces. But uh, in I, that far back, actually, the state was didn't have any of these strictures. So you lost a day, you just lost a day, and we may actually, I think, in some years, wound up getting out in May. I mean, there was ne there there are many changes, including people's expectations of safety, people's expectations of of notification, the fact that we have many more people working, uh, supervision becomes an increased problem. We see that, of course, in the various demands that are put on schools, and we can all argue about how much of that is appropriate, how much of that we can really take responsibility for, but I have to tell you, I think that uh, those of us who are wrestling with this decision do not want to make a decision that ultimately is directly traceable to uh, or would be seen as directly traceable uh, to uh, what would be considered undue concern. Anne. Um, I'm delighted to hear everybody wants one vacation in March. That's something I brought up a few years ago, and parents had actually said, you know, that they would like to see that. And I think, you know, we should listen to that feedback and do something about it for the calendar next year, because I think it I think it's a good idea, but I do, I, I really do think it's unfair to, to spring it on people at this late date. I think it raises a lot of other issues, but I, I really want to speak to the, um, the high school graduation issue. I personally wasn't in favor of having high school graduation so early anyway, but I want to make sure that, um, that we're not just ramming something in, and unfortunately, um, it just sounds to me like we're trying to work around the scheduling and the social activities that have to do with graduation. I know how tight the scheduling is on these facilities and stuff, but I want to make sure that, that our utmost focus is on the academics for the kids. And I guess I would want to ask Rick um, to please come back to us showing a real academic plan for those kids and not just trying to ram ram this through because they have social obligations. I know how important that is, but you know, we were talking over and over and over again about, you know, the importance of the senior year and all, all that kind of thing. I think we, we send, um, you know, kind of a mixed message when, um, you know, our focus is mostly on the, the social aspect um, rather than the academic aspect. I just wonder if anyone has a guess in discussing the Saturday thing as opposed to the vacation thing. I mean, we talk about people that have plans already for vacations. People have all kinds of plans on Saturdays. Saturday, um, you know, my daughter just enrolled in a Saturday art course at the Maine College of Art that runs for eight Saturdays. That was not inexpensive. <laughs> and Saturday sports events, all kinds of things like that. So I just wonder if anyone has a guess would the attendance be worse on a vacation week? Would it be worse on Saturdays? Is there any way to quantify it? Well, I've been through both. Um, you know, it's one of the nice things that haven't been around a while. Um, <laughs> uh, it certainly made me think twice about recommending Saturdays. Um, your attendance is in direct proportion to uh, the age of the child. Somewhere below seventh grade, you get pretty good attendance. Somewhere above seventh grade, you do not. It's a toughie for the high school in particular. But uh, so it's not, it's, it, you know, my, my uh, suggestion about having a plan that says we've got a top winter. If we miss a day, we're going to make it up the following Saturday. Let's regard it as a regular day of school for that week. I'm really uh, serious in making that suggestion, but I honestly believe that um, it would take some self-discipline. I mean, people would really have to just say, we really care enough about getting to school and covering uh, material. And I certainly have had some conversations with parents who've called me who are sincerely, and I know that, that in this community, there's a great deal of interest, sincere interest. We don't like this break in the continuity. Um, kids need to have some sense that things are going on and so on. So maybe that's not a bad idea. But if it's just a makeup day, the attendance is terrible at the upper grades. Yeah, 
Are there anybody from the public who wants to comment? No? No need? Yeah? Go ahead. Want you, do you mind coming up to the podium? It doesn't, mic doesn't carry. And if you would just introduce yourself, that'd be great. Uh, Paul Discord on Woodcrest Road. Um, I yes, uh, so I support uh, Mrs. Goldman's. It's a tough way to. It's a tough thing to call. And I think uh, uh, we have two working people in our household, <coughs> and uh, starting late probably isn't as much of a problem as uh, getting getting a uh, early homecoming sprung on you. You know, we have the emergency system set up with neighbors and relatives and what have you, but there's always some chance that something might not work. So, uh, But I, I think that starts, uh, a late start uh, would be an option. For instance, if, you're, uh, uh, if your road maintenance people just don't have the information for you uh, early, I don't think you should be afraid to start late. One of the few times when that really works is um, if it's a matter of their getting to the schoolyards. To be honest, sometimes, and I think it happened maybe, well, I know it happened last year. I'm not, not consciously aware of it this year uh, as a major reason anyway. Uh, it is possible to have a lot of snow overnight and it stops snowing or it's tapering off early in the morning, but we can't get in the schoolyards. Um, and I know there was one time, I think it was uh, Randy, you told me you got stuck in the yard. It was a day, uh, a snow call day. I mean, uh, we have upwards of 200 vehicles on both campuses, I would say. Um, and until those things are plowed out, I mean, part of our problem is getting people there early enough to supervise the kids when they come. I mean, it's just a multi-layered kind of problem. So um, that sometimes that, that situation an hour or two delay can, can really make the difference. Uh, the only caveat I have about that um, late arrival, and this again is based on my own experience, is that I've tried that on a few occasions when, not here but in Gorham, uh, where ice is often a problem. And um, where we were told that it would warm up and that they would be able to get enough salt on the ice was raining, you know, one of those ice storms that turned to rain, and then it's raining on ice, which of course makes traveling treacherous. And uh, they told me, okay, in about an hour or two hours at most, we'll be able to get enough effect from the salt to go, and then having to call off school because it didn't work that way. Um, that taught me a very bitter lesson that you can have a kid whose parents have gone to work, stuck outside, and nobody tells him that school has been called off. So, I mean, it, what I'm saying is that both of these circumstances, in my experience and my conviction that we need to be, have a good understanding back and forth, which is why I will send a letter home and mail it home so it doesn't get lost in the backpack to every parent explaining that we will try to do this, but in a responsible manner. But to alert parents that the nature of this year is that you too have to listen to the weather forecast, as I'm sure you do, I'm, I'm sort of paranoid about it, you know. I'm upstairs watching the cable TV, and then I turn down and flick through all the various weather forecasts to try to find the one I like, I guess. But the, um, the fact of the matter is that, you know, we don't honestly know what's going to happen until it happens. Yeah. I, was, I, I came here tonight, and I was thinking that perhaps uh, uh, one of the best options would be uh, increasing the length of the day somewhat. Uh, I know in the summertime, uh, you know, in, in my company, we tend to work, you know, nine-hour days and take a half day on Friday. Uh, but as I'm sitting here listening to uh, people tonight, I began to think that, well, perhaps that, would, that might work well for uh, the upper grades where, uh, um, but, per but perhaps it wouldn't work well for the little kids where, uh, you know, attention span is a as a factor or something like that. No, the state won't let us do it anymore anyway. Yeah, so not even an option. No. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Sue, thanks for Sue. Sue. Um, of course, the school uh, snow days also directly impacts uh, community services and our extended daycare program. And there seems to be a lot more demand on us to stay open on those days. And so far, we've been able to say if school is closed, 
chances are the facility is really not accessible, so we've gone with exactly what the school calendar is. Um, a good example of, of what happened yesterday, we had kids arrive to extend a day in the morning as some kids arrived to school. Um, parents couldn't understand why we, we weren't in operation, and we said, you know, we follow the school calendar. When school's canceled, we are not open. And in most cases, that's because we can't access the buildings. Well, I want to tell you, at 3 o'clock yesterday, and even worse than that, 5.30, when parents would be coming to get their kids, the snow drifts in front of the high school were up over your knees. I left there about quarter of four. You couldn't get a car into the school facility or out of the school facility. So we, we're having that dilemma, too, as to whether or not we're meeting the demands of the working population by calling off daycare on no school days. Um, I'd just like to make a couple of comments in regard to how we're going to make them up or how we may possibly make up days. Um, there's no question, I think, you know, making this, those two teacher workshop days, um, student days, certainly buys us two days. Um, in regard to the Saturday scheduling, um, Connie mentioned that if you miss a day of school that week, you would go to school on Saturday that week. That doesn't give folks very much planning time. Um, you also don't know whether or not you're going to miss a second day that week. And if we're going to go on Saturdays, I think we need to give people due notice. You know, take a Saturday in April, take a Saturday in May when we know we're not going to have inclement weather, and give people eight weeks, ten weeks to plan for that being a school day, rather than saying, okay, we missed Tuesday this week, we'll go to school on Saturday. I know we have a lot of Saturday community services programs already in place. Um, certainly, if school were in session, we'd cancel those and make other arrangements. But I do think we, we need to let people plan. And I think we need to pick times when we're not interfering with the vacations. And I think we need to pick times when we can give people due notice so that they can plan for their family schedules. Well, I knew it wasn't probably a good idea, but it had a certain <laughs> classic ring to it that, you know, kind of... Uh, so is it, is it the policy of community services to not be open when there is school? We follow the school calendar. So um, just because it's easier to do it that way. If school is canceled, we don't run our adult classes in the evening. If school is canceled, the pool is closed. Yeah, and those purposes are for um, access to the building. We may not have things plowed out. And sometimes people can't understand it because they don't have kids in school. And they'll say, in fact, we do run some of the morning swims because we can't get to people fast enough to let them know that the 6 o'clock swim is off. So we may come in, run that swim, and then close the pool in conjunction with school closing. So yes, that's basically what we do. But we need to look at our services, too, and, and are we meeting the needs of the working people? Because they need it more than ever when school is not in session in regard to daycare. Other questions, comments? The only other day we haven't really mentioned is uh, Memorial Day in May is a holiday um, that may be worth looking at. Can we at. legally do that? I don't know. We should look at it. <laughs> I really don't know. Yeah. I have a feeling that that's a bigger problem than it sounds, but I, I'd that, have to check. That is a contractual issue yeah, with, really with is. everybody. Um, it certainly it's is. A lot of, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of political issues as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, that would interfere if we talked about February vacation, because one of those days is a holiday right. also. April, too. Patriots. April. Yeah, well, you have four days. <laughs> You're really basically talking yeah. about four days. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, Charlie. It's interesting that uh, Priscilla had a date that would probably appeal, because we as a board will be working that day, and that's March 9th. So we'll punish everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we'll punish everybody. Um, any other comments and Connie, where, where do we go from here with this? You'll I will be talking to uh, the administration with, uh, I'm sure I'll have some conversation with the, uh, in a you know, sort of informal way with the teachers association and I would simply ask for feedback. I mean, um, I think we've covered most of the available options. They really aren't a whole lot. People have given me certainly something to think about. Um, I will continue to make the best decision I can. I just was, oh, go ahead, Ann. Can I, I, I want to just, I really agree with Sue. To the extent that we could move ahead and make decisions on, on 
on things. I think there's, you know, pretty good agreement that we'd like to try not to go beyond the date on the calendar already, the 21st. And so if we, if some of these decisions could be made fairly promptly so we can at least, you know, consolidate, uh, you know, our losses here, um, I think it would be very considerate if we could let everyone know. I mean, the I was going to say, kids especially the February 16th workshop yeah. day really needs to be made quickly because parents will need to know that date. And our next board meeting is actually just a few days before that, so it's, it's pretty important. Carla? I was just going to say that, as I mentioned earlier, the only feedback I personally have gotten is from people that favor the February vacation. Um, I would encourage anyone who's watching to call any one of us if you have a strong opinion because I think that we would like to get a consensus on what people are thinking. I got all negative, don't cancel February vacation, cancel April, so, and, and some so Saturday, so it just it really runs the, runs the spectrum. Are we clear right now that graduation stands on the 7th so that the seniors who are very concerned and have called can rest assured that they are graduating on the 7th? I wouldn't say that that necessarily stands. You wouldn't? <laughs> I think we need as, to. As Ann said, I think we need to come up and, and, and really look at some options, too, as far as whether moving it another week, maybe sometime during the week. Uh, uh, I think that's something I need to, to really talk with. Uh, but right now, they have still have their 170 days. That, that is no, not in will. danger. Right, but we can't afford any more. Any more. One more. One more. If we move the workshop days. Oh. Do the seniors go back to school after graduation? No. No. Mm -hmm. no. I'm wondering about the count then. Um, it is. I come up with. Is it 170 with? I come up right now. If they graduate on the seventh, that they end up with 163 days. Okay. I, then I miscounted. I, I'm. I'm. I just okay. did it right now, so I. Okay. Well, I'll have to. In other words, okay. we'll be back. I would come back to the board at the, at the next meeting, if not sooner, and, and let you know. Okay. But again, we, what we plan to do is meet with uh, members of the senior class, advisors, also faculty, and, and talk about ways that, uh, again, will be uh, not just jammed in there for the sake of getting days in, but, but will be uh, substantial days, too, for the kids. And I think we'll work something out. Uh, I can also start calling some of the facilities that we've rented and, and see if there are, what, what openings there are in the following week. Yeah, especially midweek, they might be available yeah. if we moved it to the only The problem with a graduation on a weekday is, is family that are traveling to yeah. a grandson or nephew's uh, or niece's uh, graduation. Yeah. Uh, but maybe a later in the day type of graduation. Uh, we have a parent here. <laughs> <laughs> Any travelers coming, Charlie, for... Uh, sure do. So. And uh, announcements <clears throat> have been printed already? Pardon? Have the announcements been no. printed? No. And senioritis is already settled in. This is no. January. But that's not new. No. 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 I mean, I, I, you're talking about the last couple of weeks of, yeah, of the elementary, I middle school. I could, I could be, it starts even earlier no, that's what I with agree. seniors. I know, but I think we have a responsibility oh, I agree. to do. I agree. I agree. I worry about our message. Okay. Thank you. Rick knows. Thank you, Rick. Um, thank you, Connie. Okay. Moving. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I don't enjoy this at all. Uh, moving on, and I did, the next couple of items might go over really quite quickly. I did include in your packet uh, some information I picked up at a meeting for the state technology plan, and I also put in your um, agenda notes. Uh, it's very clear that the uh, state is moving forward with a lot of energy and hope on the 9X proposal which is also uh, not just 9X, but that's sort of what it's been called, the hope of having, um, uh, in a variety of ways, a lot of infrastructure available. For instance, a uh, connection to the internet for every high school and every public library. Um, and the, the, the thing that's confusing, I did put a little chart in your, in your packet, uh, it's hard to figure out from the chart, and it's hard to figure out from what people say when you ask questions exactly what they really are planning on doing. There's some very good people involved. Um, some people felt the meeting was a little premature because there was an awful lot of stuff saying, well, we haven't figured that out yet. There's a group working on that. We're not sure. There are some concerns that are budgetary. For instance, even just given today's rates, 
if we were to tie into the 9X um, pipeline, uh, which uh, some parts of it anyway through the state would actually, that connection would, would uh, bring us some equipment, cable interactive TV equipment, plus the, in, the connection itself would be at state expense. Nevertheless, at today's rates, it's about a $2,000 per month charge. Now, the idea is, is that that's going to go down, especially if every library, every high school is on it. But there's a good deal of that's a, tw you know, and it's a 12-month charge. That's a, yeah, it's a little more than 2000 So it's about a 25000 a year budgetary item that is not going to happen within the next year, uh, possibly at some point during um, maybe about a year from now, so I'm not asking to put $25,000 in the budget for that purpose. But those are the kinds of issues that are unclear, haven't been pinned down, that you do need to be aware of. The other thing that comes up is uh, the, a lot of discussion about how to maximize whatever 9X is doing. I guess the reality, and I'm not trying to be critical of, of anybody, it's just simply as a, as a person who isn't involved with a whole lot of, of uh, uh, business understanding of the future of technology. Um, the cable companies have some problems with the 9X plans, 9X has some problems with the cable companies, and then there are, of course, other technologies that haven't been fully developed yet. Who's going to control the airwaves, or whatever, if it's not called airwaves, whatever. Um, this is so, it's sort of like putting in place an infrastructure. Whoever gets first dibs on the infrastructure is going to have a commercial advantage. Uh, so there are those issues out there that, that are hard to pin down and follow. Um, one of the suggestions that we're hearing here in this district is that we really should look at uh, dealing with finding out just what it would cost and what the various aspects of cabling, using cable, to network not only our schools, but also this building and the other, the library obviously, and the um, other municipal buildings, and then tying into the 9X um, uh, pipeline. Uh, that strikes me as being, from talking to other districts, uh, something we certainly ought to explore. But over and over, what's also obvious is this is not just a school issue. It is a town issue. We're talking about putting in place a technological infrastructure. So I'm going to suggest to you, and you don't have to do anything more than give me uh, some kind of quick feedback, that I approach uh, the town manager and ask if we can put together a town and school small group. This doesn't have to be a mega group. It's not going to be a building committee. But we need to have some kind of, of group that uh, is tagged as the people who will look into some of these possibilities because um, it's not going to, we're going to be, all of a sudden, these things will be churning around and I'll get a letter or somebody will get a letter from the State Department saying uh, we're ready in two, two weeks to put in your, your interface. Well, we need to have plans and know what we're doing. Uh, some parts of this plan, uh, the school districts are going to have to submit a plan. Uh, I saw Jay Trevaro at the meeting. I said, how closely does our plan meet the requirements so far as they've been established, which frankly aren't complete. Uh, he said, fine, except you'll need to add a, play, a piece for interactive TV. That is a part of the bond issue, bringing in that capacity. Uh, so we are in pretty good shape in that respect, and we have a technology committee and so on. But I think we need to <laughs> branch out, have a little subgroup that makes sure that we have some town people as well as, as school people ready to talk about this, do a little homework and so on. Charlie? The other thing too is that in running the new cables for the high school, et cetera, they have been run to 77. To get across to be able to even connect into is going to require some town support. That is not something that we can do on our own. Right. So again, that's another piece of being able to connect into a, a one town uh, technological you know, uh, system. So yeah, I concur with your Well, I assume that you would, and I will pursue this with a conversation with the town manager and get back to you. Because the new librarian at, at Thomas Memorial is going to do some things in, in computer technology and that we could be doing duplication and that kind of thing. And I think we need to eliminate that. Well, Jay went with me to this meeting and uh, also uh, Joyce Bell. And so we had an opportunity to make sure that we were 
laying the, that groundwork so we would be talking back and forth to each other. Good. Thank you. Anybody? Sounds good, Connie. Going on, uh, our core three town core team got snowed out yesterday, but we did have our own in-house meeting. The National Science Foundation grant is moving along. The assessment uh, piece is uh, just about, I think it actually is finished, and we thank Tom and um, Ren Wilkinson and Steve Conley and others on the, our own core committee worked hard at it, as well as teachers from the other other school districts. Um, and uh, so that's moving along with a few interruptions, like everything else. You um, received uh, a, a big, large packet from us from the focus groups that is, will be in the mail tomorrow to all the participants, from, um, community participants in the focus groups. And a reminder to people, we have a workshop a week from today um, 7 o'clock at the cafetorium at uh, Panko Middle School. And uh, we'll be distributing to teachers who participated and make some copies available for any of our student participants and the administration will receive that. Uh, we certainly hope that we will have people who participated come to that workshop and others who may not have uh, been able to participate but are just interested and you have a pretty hefty packet to go through, so we'll be talking about that next week. Question or comment? And budget timeline, we had a discussion, let's see if I make sure, I know we had to change some of these dates. Um, <coughs> this year in response to um, some discussion with boards, we have, um, try, we're gonna try a different approach. We typically, uh, for public comment, review the school budget. Let's see, I guess we take about four evenings to do that in uh, March, usually beginning the first of March, and try to adopt the budget sometime during the month of March. This year, uh, we're gonna follow um, a different procedure where there'll be an all-day meeting on Saturday, March 9th, from 8 to 4.30, um, that will be held in the Council Chambers Conference Room, which is the conference room on this floor back in the corner. Um, the, in that full day review, we'll take all the schools as well as community services and district-wide accounts. There will be a follow-up evening meeting Thursday, March 21st. We'll have to find a place. The date would be, um, you want 7 or 7.30? I don't know, I was just writing that down. Um, 7.30 we try to be consistent, but 7 o'clock gives us a little more time. I think our experience has been that for a budget workshop, you're smarter to start at the 7. I would say 7. And, um, you, and with a tentative follow-up on Tuesday, March 26. Um, there, at 7. At 7. At 7. Mm -hmm. This will be preceded by a series of meetings with individual building administrators, myself, and the business manager. Uh, the sheet you have, we've had to change some of those dates also, and I don't have them all uh, worked out with the buildings, but they'll be probably on January 23rd instead of January 16th and January 24th instead of the 17th, but I'll have to confirm that. Uh, we do have a combined budget meeting for all administrators on Friday, January 26th from 1 to 3. Um, I think last year some of you chose to attend that meeting. It's kind of an early preview for you, and you are welcome to attend it. And that's it for me. Thank you, Connie. Uh, next item on the agenda is school board subcommittees and reports. Charlie, finance subcommittee. Uh, we met at 6.30 in the chamber's conference room behind us. Uh, we signed the warrants. We reviewed the appropriations report. We're in good shape and on, on approximate percentage of where we should be. Um, we got state approval for a school bus purchase. Um, and we will need to come up with about $7,000 in order to completely finance that. Um, and we're going to, to um, entertain looking at some of our carry forward as a possible way of, of meeting that $7,000 shortfall. Um, we reviewed the state subsidy printout. Um, reviewed a playground proposal for um, improving our pond cove, pond cove, <laughs> two playground areas. Um, 
did not take any action and are going to look at some other alternatives. Um, we looked at a town school capital improvement um, package which was put together, which is a first attempt as a one town um, concept of looking at capital improvements for five year plans. Um, we discussed special education classroom casework and um, instructed the um, business manager to make some inquiries for us. And we also received an unemployment refund of $16,000, which we will maintain for possible future use. And we uh, also looked at our uh, budget review dates and change, which have just been announced. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions or comments? Keith? I just want to make note of the uh, report that Mike McGovern has put together uh, for the Town of Cape Elizabeth Capital Improvement Plan with the school bus on the front to signify that the first time that they plan of this type is, or a book is that of this type has actually been put together, <coughs> combining the school and the town together. And in reviewing the approval of a town, of an initial bus by the state, it will be our plan to replace a bus every year from now on. So that was also something that we came to consensus on at our finance subcommittee. School building committee. Honey, I don't know. Oh, actually, that. That I, didn't I intended to cross that off because we haven't had a meeting. Uh, we've had a... We've had some follow-up on the construction, but we really don't have a final report on that yet. I mean, we're really phasing out definitely punch list kinds of things and so on. So let's just skip that and we're moving on. Technology committee. We get snowed <laughs> out. <laughs> they could get they could out. <laughs> okay, policy subcommittee. Well, I'm happy to report that even though it was a snow day, we did meet <laughs> last week. Uh, the policy committee met with uh, Rick DeFusco and Sharon Merrill from the high school to talk about, uh, just get an overview of the um, uh, achievement tests and the SATs that, that the uh, students take at the high school, just to get a flavor for what the tests um, are like, um, how we compare to other districts, and how the tests are used internally. Um, it, was a, it was just a very informal um, discussion uh, we also talked about the 11th grade MEAs, and those will be reported um, on, I, I think, at the next board the meeting. Board Sharon will come to the next board meeting, we hope, and um, report on those tests formally. Um, Since the SATs are back for this senior class, will she also mm -hmm. address those? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, so she, yeah, so we need to also um, include those. Um, and we need to make sure that the whole board gets those um, those test results. I'm not sure that you did, did you? You did get them, the um, SATs? Okay. Um, we were supposed to also meet with Lyle uh, Kramer to discuss K through eight, but he was ill. Um, so we're, we're gonna do that at a later date. Um, I think what we're what we're hoping to do is, is consolidate all these discussions of achievement tests um, through the school system into one report at a board meeting um, so that we can actually look at them in some kind of system-wide way and get an idea of, uh, of uh, what they're telling us and um, how we can use the information. Um, the policy subcommittee is going to meet again tomorrow. Um, Rick, you're the only one on the agenda now, so if you want to come at 1030. 1030. Um, Rick's going to make a presentation to us about the possibility of um, raising graduation requirements at the high school as a preliminary um, discussion. And then um, I just arbitrarily set another policy subcommittee <laughs> um, for Thursday, uh, January 25th. So that would be getting us back on our regular schedule. And hopefully we can be talking to Lyle um, at on eight, that date. At 8.30? At 8.30. Great. Thank you, Ann. Um, Research Strand Committee. And we met on December 12th. I'm, I'm still going to pass these out. I know that some of you have gotten these minutes. 
but I'm not sure who did and who didn't, so uh, just in case. And we do have a meeting scheduled for Thursday, the 11th, that's Thursday, isn't it? Yes. Um, these minutes summarize where we are. We're pretty much moving along according to what you have heard in the past. One point I would make that in listening to the state talk about the importance of putting infrastructure for technology in place, uh, it was certainly uh, a subject of our conversation that is um, the three of us who are there from Cape Elizabeth, we need to have a curriculum plan that is an integral part of technology. Uh, there's going to be a lot of energy, a lot of effort put into uh, getting the wiring, the hard wiring, all, with all that that implies. Um, and I'm glad that we have this research strand uh, committee going because much of what we're talking about here is really the uh, a way to teach children right from the get-go how to think about using that technology. Obviously, this isn't the only use, but at the same time, um, it's a good way to get a handle on how do we really teach children to think about uh, information is something that you, uh, as it says in the minutes there in capitals, students and teachers should see themselves as explorers seeking understanding rather than as consumers of information. Uh, and I really think that that's a major theme of that committee and one that we want to keep working on. Okay. Thanks, Connie. Um, Art Committee report. Keith? Uh, also snowed out yesterday, been rescheduled for the 22nd, Monday the 22nd at 4 o'clock in the Pond Cove Art Room. Uh, the agenda is continuing to, to share curriculum and schedules of, the, of our teachers, uh, to start developing the five-year plan and collecting data uh, about existing curriculums that are already out there. Right. And he's mentioned the time. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, staff development, we got snowed out yesterday, and we haven't rescheduled yet. <laughs> well, we have, have. you. Actually, uh, Mary's been working on the uh, sheets, that is the evaluation sheets, as well as comment sheets. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll have that report ready for you, but I know from informal conversations with people during the day and uh, certainly from some of the sheets that Mary's been sharing with me. It was really a very positive day. It, was, it seemed to be uh, a day that people felt they got a lot out of. I think the administrators would all second that in one way or the other. Um, and that the work that particularly uh, the Staff Development Committee, and I would certainly want to publicly thank uh, Beth and Ann who put in not only a lot of time on the committee itself, but time at home. I mean, there was an awful lot of tabulating, a lot of trying to figure out what teachers were actually doing using technology right now, what they would like to do, what they felt they needed. So there really is a lot of information that exceeded just what was able to be done that one day. Uh, it also, I thought, uh, was an extraordinarily uh, devoted committee from the people who came from the buildings. So our two administrators around there, Nancy and Wayne. Uh, Wayne was our Master of Ceremonies the other day. He managed to keep us cheerfully on task. Uh, and certainly want to thank Gary Lenoy, uh, as well as other people who are working uh, as technology teachers. Um, it was really pretty impressive to see how much talent there is in the, within our district, as well as some people that were pulled in to help. Um, when I was at Pond Cove this afternoon, um, we had uh, Andrew Lomick McNair was teaching a staff development class in our a uh, new lab over there after school. It was well attended. I saw high school teachers as well as teachers from the building. Um, and I think when I think back, Charlie, I think it was maybe a snow day three years ago. Um, we'd had a board meeting where you had expressed some real concerns about our program. And then we had had a, a group the year before, but when we had a report, but it just didn't seem to be getting anywhere. It was sort of one of those spinning our wheels type things. And the administrators who were there at the time will remember we sat there and said, I think we better get a little further than we're actually doing. And it's, a lot has happened in the last three years in this respect. Um, Great. We will need to reschedule the next meeting, which the committee is charged with planning one more staff development day whenever 
Right. Yes. That, well, that, that's, yeah, I was just going to point out that. Whenever. We have um, issue. So we have a little more cushion since it's not coming. Well, it may not well, be coming know. right up. We don't know. Okay. Um, unfinished business and policy. Okay, we have a second reading of uh, the policy awarding of high school course credit prior to grade nine. And I just noticed this doesn't have um, the file number on it. I'm not sure there is a file number from the state, but we should find we out for the policy it. book. Um, but anyway, this is the policy we first saw um, last month. Anybody have any comments, questions? Need your memory refreshed? I hope not. Entertain a would motion. you like a motion? I would. I move that we approve the policy awarding of high school course credit prior to grade nine. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. Thank you, Ann. Uh, next <coughs> item on the agenda is new business. Um, Connie, nominations for athletic coaching positions, all 95. So we have four that are middle school positions, Kristen Tripp, middle school girls swimming, then Raymond, middle school boys swimming, Paul Casey, middle school indoor track, and Peter Mullen, also middle school indoor track. I said fall, I meant winter, sorry. The winter positions, okay. Um, yeah, excuse yes, me, they sir. are. Have they started? Have they started, Nancy? Any of them. Indoor track, swimming. Swimming. So they haven't started. Any questions? Comments? I'll make a motion. I move we accept the superintendent's nominations for athletic coaching positions for fall 1995-96 as well. Winter. It's winter. Winter. Winter, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It says fall. It says fall, yeah. but it's winter. Winter. For winter 1995-96. Uh, is there a second? I second it. Darling, any further discussion? I, I have a comment. Two, actually, I have two comments. Um, we received, I have no problem with any of these people, but we received their names this evening, uh, which makes it awkward if I'm called and in question on anybody who is, is a coach. I, I had no notice, they have no notice that these people are being put up for um, this position and I just would urge that we have it publicized a little bit beforehand so that everybody knows who we're voting on and when and why and get all the specs out there. And I think even though the people we're voting on tonight are, are known, it would be helpful to have a little bit of a background on some of them so that we can justify or answer any questions that might come up on why these people have been put forward as coaches for that particular level or sport. Fair enough. Thank you, Gail. We would all appreciate we that. We all agree. <laughs> um, any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Um, next item, Connie, request for two school board members for service delivery committee. That's the one that we talked about, the town council and you are co-sponsoring. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one where we, um, it, it. such, you know, <laughs> some issues as far as um, what, one, of the, one of the issues we've talked about internally uh, maybe we'll find somebody who would like us to research um, cost per square foot for maintenance and for custodial services. This is something we have some comparisons, but we really don't have a good handle on that because of the um, lack of data in this state. We, have, we can get some national figures but for school buildings, but we really don't have good comparable figures. Uh, for instance, one contractor we talked to about uh, custodial services at one time suggested to Scott and me that we ought to think about um, comparison like a mall. What does it take to clean the mall? Because you have heavy traffic, you have different uses, uh, you know, different use rooms, you have a lot of corridors, and um, you have a lot of parking issues and so forth. Um, I really, there's a book called the high school is shopping mall, the shopping mall high school. So I, I have a little problem with, with 
with saying that because I certainly don't want to reinforce or, or confuse that, but we're just talking about cleaning. We're not talking about the educational aspect. So anyway, that's the service delivery option, I mean, that committee. Who wants to get involved? In? Do I have some volunteers? I will work on appointing then two members. Okay. Uh, next item is I'd like to announce all the meetings that are upcoming on Tuesday, January 16th will be the workshop on the focus group results on the mission statement. That's at 7 o'clock at the Pond Cove Middle School Cafetorium. Then the next Tuesday on January 23rd at 7 o'clock in the Pond Cove Cafetorium, there'll be a workshop on the existing guidance, health, and drug awareness programs. The following Monday, the 29th, we will be meeting at 7 o'clock in the Chamber Conference Room with Main School Management to hear about a superintendent search and possibilities of what one might look like or if we would um, contract with them. Um, the Finance Subcommittee meeting will be before the next school board meeting on Tuesday, no, not on Tuesday, January 9th. It will be on Oops, February. February 13th at 6.30. The next school board meeting will be that same night, February the 13th at 7.30. And tomorrow morning we have a policy subcommittee along with the next one on January 25th. And just to ask all of the community to mark their calendars for the March 9th Saturday budget workshop day all day. We are specifically doing it on a Saturday so that the public feels that they are available to go and have input. We will be meeting all day. Uh, we will start probably with the high school budget, but we can put more information out. But um, we would start at 8 o'clock in the morning or thereabout. Any other announcements? We need a motion for executive. Oh. <laughs> I will entertain a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiation. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? 7 0. We're adjourned. Is it snowing out yet? No. Well, <laughs> six or seven feet. Uh. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm so tired of asking that question. That's the whole meeting. It's kind of rough. It's like a rock mountain.